Now, before we get to all of that, I want to talk about the ongoing issues of recovery after natural disaster. Now, I get it. There's part of us that is tired of talking about bushfires. It's raining in lots of parts of the country, so come on, time to move on. Well, that is part of the reason why we have to have this conversation. What do you do after a natural disaster? There is plenty of suggestions that the state or federal government should start buying back the land of bushfire-affected houses and basically those people will disappear from communities. Well, there's another way of doing it and it's exactly what happened in Grantham in Queensland, not too far from uh, Toowoomba, when they had those massive floods a few years ago. Somebody was involved in exactly the idea of not buying and running, but maybe picking people up and moving them, is Jamie Simmons, who is the uh, former director of the Grantham Relocation Project, and uh, Jamie joins us now. Jamie, good evening, and thank you so much for the chat. Hi, Paul. How you doing? Good, mate. Now, um, I'm really fascinated by this, which is uh, there's plenty of suggestions out there saying uh, look, maybe the best thing to do for a bushfire affected house is to buy off the land, that way it'll never burn again. Problem is, that destroys communities. That's right. That's exactly right. You know, last time I was on we talked about the importance of keeping communities together following a disaster. A buyback, we looked at that briefly uh, following the, the disaster in Grantham. But we came to the conclusion really quick that it wasn't what we wanted. Essentially what a buyback is, is government comes in, has a look at your home and says, here's a check, and they just pay you to leave. In these small communities, every person is important. You know, uh, so when you go in and you write this check out, that family packs up, they pack up the car and start driving away. Well, that small regional community, all of a sudden, they lost the best teacher in the high school or they lost the, the GP who gets up at 2 in the morning to help Mrs. Jones, uh, you know, with her medication. Or they lose the, the captain of the soccer team, you know, and when they drive down the road and they, they go into a city like Brisbane or, or Sydney or wherever it is they end up, that community that receives them doesn't even value them for what they are to that regional community. So they just get another GP or they get another teacher or another kid kicking a soccer ball around. They don't understand, but those small regional communities Every family is so vital because you start buying up five homes, you start buying up ten families, all of a sudden that community quickly becomes a ghost town. Now, logistically, how does this work? Because lots of the bushfire affected areas are sort of one road in, one road out properties. They could be worth a whole lot more or less than some of the houses that you were talking about here. Um, who owned the land in and around Grantham for you to be able to swap it? Uh, because obviously, you know, if I'm at number 24, but, uh, but you know, a K down the road, there's still houses, well, somebody already owns that property. So who is in charge of being able to hand over the land? Yeah. So what we did in Grantham, the council, the local government, purchased a parcel of land just next to the existing town of Grantham up on higher ground. And what we did is we said anybody who was flood devastated, and we made a map and we said anybody in this area is eligible for a land swap into that new estate. So what we did is we started pushing dirt around, started building roads, and we said anybody who wants to come up on this new estate is welcome. In the early days, we weren't sure what kind of take up we were going to get. But as we pushed dirt around, as we started building roads, as we started putting in pipes, people got excited. And so how it worked was we did a land ballot. So people who were eligible for the land swap could jump into this ballot and we would take them up every weekend. We'd walk them around this estate. We'd show them the lots and they could start to preference the lots that they wanted. And it ended up going into a ballot. And that ballot process was a bit of an exciting time for people <laughs> because it was a bit of a gamble. And, you know, Australians love their gambling. So, uh, you know, a bit of a lottery was exciting. And it was those little things that we did throughout. And we did lots of these little things just to keep people excited and interested and feeling like, you know, this bus is coming. I got to either get on this bus or I'm going to miss my opportunity. And that's how we did it and how we did it in 11 months. Yeah, I mean, you talked about how important it is uh, that, 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 you know, a city like Brisbane, uh, Gold Coast, uh, you know, you're not going to notice a, a, a big churnover that's of right. people. You are going to notice that in Batemans Bay. You are going to notice that in and around the Gippsland region, which is already dealing with matters like the, the Victorian government trying to kill off logging. So this is why yeah. it matters. Um, how do you get in touch with government? How do they get in touch with you? Uh, how, how can we use the Grantham model as a potential one uh, that can be used in other parts of the country? 
Yeah, well, you know, people are contacting me now. So I, I've, I've started, you know, on, on your show a couple of weeks ago, and I've done some other stuff, and people are contacting me, and, and it's really exciting. I, I always say, look, I'm not here to give anybody advice. There's plenty of people out there doing that. But what I want to do is show that I have an experience, that I've been through a process that, you know, it's a dark time in some of those communities, and I get it, I've been there. But I just want people to see that, hey, there's ways forward. There's ways that are really positive and ways to rebuild communities. Like talking about Grantham, you know, we had, we put almost 80% of the money we spent in, in the relocation went to local people, local tradies, local workers, local material. We had council crews, they built the estate. They were on graders, they were on diggers, they did it themselves. And I'm hearing from those guys, I, you know, I got a message from, from one of the great, great supervisors out there just a couple of days ago and he said, you know, Jamie, I'm glad you're telling this story. You know, there's a bit of sadness and a bit of pain there, but you know, I'm so proud to be a part of that sort of thing. So what we did, we gave the local community the opportunity to rebuild their own community and we plowed that money in. We could have gotten some multinational corporation in to do it, but they would have, you know, we said, yeah, we want people in homes in 11 months. They would have laughed us out the door. But when you got these own guys, you know, men and women getting on these machines and they were flooded themselves. They were, they were going home after work fixing up their own homes they were proud to be part of it and that you gotta harness that you know that's the real important thing all i can do is talk about my experience and i just hope you know people take that on board and say you know what we've got a chance jamie's website jamiesimmons.com uh, where you can read about stuff you can buy his book and have a look there but if you're somebody in one of these affected local councils pick up the telephone if you need his number get in touch with us thank you jamie i love this no blame practical get on one foot in front of the other that's the only way to go forward that's it that's it Thank you, Thanks, mate. Thanks, Paul. Good on you, mate.